Welcome to the On Purpose Investor Podcast. My name is Eric Vogel. I'm a real estate investor, mastermind coach, husband to an amazing woman, and often my co-host, Tiffany, and father to two incredible boys. I'm on a mission to help you become a real estate investor and not only achieve seven-figure success like my wife and I did, but to do so with intention, direction, and clarity. If you want to transform your financial and personal goals, become the version of yourself you've always wanted, and reach your dream life ASAP, then you're in the right place. Thank you for deciding to hit that play button today. Now let's begin. What if I told you there was a way to have 80% fewer properties than you initially thought you needed, and you could generate enough cash flow to replace your income? Would you believe me? This may seem crazy, but it's real. And my wife and I have been using this strategy for the past four years in addition to our single and multi-family portfolio. In this episode, we talk with Blake Lewis from PadSplit, where you can rent your home by the room and generate higher cash flow with fewer properties. Stay tuned to discover this somewhat hidden gem to triple or quadruple your cash flow. I encourage you to go on YouTube as there are many visual aids that go along. The link to that will be in the show notes. I hope y'all are doing well today. We have an awesome coffee hour lined up for you, and we are excited to be bringing on Blake Lewis from Pad Split. Um, uh, this morning, she's going to be able to answer your questions on what do Pad Splits look like, what income can they produce, how do you transform your rental properties into Pad Splits, how in the world can you make money in today's market? Well, the answer is here. The answer about how to you know make cash flowing properties happen in today's market. Without further ado, let's bring on Blake Lewis. Good morning, Blake, and welcome to Investor Good morning. Day. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How are you today? Do doing great, you know. Oh, wonderful, Not wonderful. Raining, so happy to be here. That's right. That's right. Um, first off, I, I love to start, um, especially coffee hour, with what's happened to you this week? What's great? What's, what's good? What's cooking with you? Uh, let's see. So I had a great in-person meetup last night um, in Atlanta with some local uh, future pad split hosts. So that mm -hmm. was great. Um, and I'm really happy because tennis season is in full swing. So I have multiple tennis matches going on. So have to just, it's a good time of year. Awesome. Very, very good. All right. Uh, so what's what's going on with me on my side of the world? We have been doing our best to make Investor Connect uh, happen. We're doing our best to to grow Investor Connect. And also my wife and I, we, we've got a four month old. Well, in four days, he's going to be five months old. So we're we're struggling to find sleep in this uh, unique season of life. But we're blessed beyond measure and we're thankful for it. Well, thank you so much. So um, what is Pad Split? We are the marketplace for privatized affordable housing. Um, what does that mean? Stick around and find out. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Blake. I'm the sales manager at PadSplit. I joined the company three and a half years ago when we were a team of about 25. We now have over 120 people working. Um, so while I was wearing a lot of hats before, the good news is as you go through your PadSplit journey, there's always someone to help you. So I work with investors to get them started. Then we have an onboarding team and then we have a host success and account management team for everything you need after your property is live. Um, for me, my whole career has been spent just working with investors and business owners, really just like to know kind of what motivates people. Um, what motivates me and the reason I'm at Pad Split is twofold. One, um, I love real estate. It's what my dad does and what my granddad did. But also our social mission is really important to me. And our mission is to help provide financial independence to low and middle income workers using housing as a vehicle of stability. Um, outside of work, uh, it is officially March. So I can say uh, rock chalk Jayhawk. I'm a proud graduate of the University of Kansas. And um, my husband and I are lucky enough to have a ton of nieces and nephews and while we shouldn't have a favorite, we do. So I included a picture of our favorite niece, Anna. Um, our motto here at PadSplit is to do good and do well. And what I mean by that is do good, create safe, affordable housing for working class people and do well, make more money than you would through traditional rentals. We started about five years ago. We've served over 12,000 members. That's what we call our residents. We're in nine cities across the country. Um, we have over 6,000 active bedrooms. And like I mentioned, over 100 people working every day. And the mission of every employee here is to help solve the affordable housing shortage one room at a time. Uh, I want to introduce you to Kiosha. Kiosha is a pad split member. 
She was attending graduate school in Atlanta, couldn't afford a place for her, herself and her kids. So her kids were le living two hours away, uh, three hours away with her mom. As she moved into a pad split, was able to pay down debt and save money. And then after about nine months in a pad split, she was able to purchase her own home and bring her kids back up to Atlanta and have her family living under one roof, just like um, everyone you know would like to do. And her story is not unique. There are so many people across the country that can't afford a basic studio apartment. So they're left with some pretty undesirable options. So in Atlanta, for example, studio apartments go for like 12 or 1400 bucks. You have to make three times that plus have a 650 uh, credit score. And there's just a lot of people that don't have that. So across America, we're talking about 15 million people. In Metro Atlanta, for example, we're talking about 150,000 people that's making under 40K a year and are single. Um, another thing that is difficult for a lot of people is the upfront costs and the long-term lease agreement. At a pad split, the barrier to entry is much lower. Um, you're essentially committing to 31 days upfront and then renewing weekly after that. That said, the average stay is nine and a half months. So the costs of pad split being more affordable and the flexibility are the main reasons our residents are choosing pad split. We also don't require a minimum credit score versus an apartment where um, it's around 650. That said, we are a mission-oriented company. So one of the things we do is we um, report all of the on-time weekly payments to help members improve their credit score. And typically we're seeing about an 80 point credit score um, improvement after a few months in a pad split. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's sort of who we're serving. A little bit more about our members. The average age is 35. Um, most people are making around $30,000. 90% of the people that stay in a pad split are earning less than 55,000. Um, everyone pretty much has a full-time job. Most people do not work from home. And the most important thing I like to see here is that 91% of people staying in a pad split would recommend it to a friend or family member. So how does this work? On the resident side, we offer something that is affordable and flexible. We make it easier to qualify, and then we provide lots of choices. On the, on the investor side, um, pad split leads to more income. We manage the collections for you. We also manage all of the marketing and the background checks to get people approved to live in your home, making sure that everyone in your home either has a full-time job or pays 12 weeks up front and has passed our screening. So what does exactly it look like? How is it that you can make housing more affordable for people in the community while also making more revenue for the investor? And the secret is to take underutilized space and turn it into income generating space. So on the left, you see a house that's in Decatur, Georgia, that was a four bedroom home being rented to a couple that was paying $2,000 a month. When that couple moved out, the investor turned this home into a seven bedroom pad split where each person is paying about $700 a month, 700 to 750 a month. So he's bringing in over $5,000 in income. So what you'll see is the dining room and living room both get converted to common areas. And then a really large bedroom in this case got turned into two rooms. Um, the reasons we encourage the conversion of common areas are twofold. So for the investor side, for every room that you're able to create, you're going to be adding anywhere from six to $800 in revenue, depending on the market and the size of the room. Um, so for you as the investor, you make more money when you convert the common areas. But converting common areas also is a better experience for the people staying in your house. Because um, in a pad split, when people don't necessarily all know each other, and everyone has like a different work schedule, if you have a common area, what inevitably happens is people are noisy while others need to sleep, or that space gets used for storage or trash, or someone has the idea to let a friend um, who hasn't passed our background check and isn't paying potentially use that space and crash there. So when you convert the common areas, it really is a win-win for everyone. Um, some people might be thinking a little bit like, oh, how does this compare to Airbnb? And one of the things I like to mention is that Airbnb is fractional in terms of time and that some of the time you have people in your, your rental and you're making some really nice returns. And then some of the time you have no one in the property and you're earning nothing. Um, in a pad split, it's fractional because it's, we're breaking up the space, but you're always going to have income coming in and you're always going to have you know someone in your home. If this sounds good and you're thinking, how do I go about doing this? Essentially, the process kind of goes like this. Getting started is having a couple calls with me or someone in a role similar to mine where we walk you through all the ins and outs of pad splits, the numbers, the types of homes that make sense, um, any vendors you'll need, everything like that. From there, um, typically people are going out to acquire property. So that means working with a realtor who has a good idea of what makes a good pad split um, and then purchasing the home. Almost always, whether you already have an asset or you're going out and purchasing one, renovations are required. So like we just saw, that usually means putting up additional walls. That might mean turning a half bathroom into a whole bathroom, those types of things. So you go through the renovation process and just like realtors, pad split and then markets we're active in, we have 
um, experienced vendors for every step of the puzzle. So realtors, contractors, property managers, lenders, photographers, insurance providers, we have solutions for you. So we would also introduce you um, to a contractor. Then when the contractor is finishing up the work, you'll prepare the home, meaning you'll make sure the Wi-Fi is set up, you'll get the home staged and photographed, and you'll create the listing on our site. Once you create the listing on our site, then you meet with our onboarding team who is going to meet with you to give you all the trainings you need to be a great host, whether that means a host that's going to self-manage and do the stuff at the property yourselves, or even just a more passive host like a lot of investors are to understand things like the financials and the occupancy and what is available in our platform. Um, and then once the property is you know, validated as meeting our standards, it can go live and you'll start earning income. Um, typically, in most of our markets, we're seeing a first booking within about six days and an 80% full house in about 30 days or less, depending on the market. And then at the 90 day point, your property is very stabilized because, you know, the people people have moved in, they they like each other, they like the convenience to work, they like the savings and they stay. Um, and then kind of from there, you have, you know, pretty long tenure. So like I was mentioning before, the average stay is about nine and a half months. Um, so that, that's a pretty good amount of time. Here's a case study. Um, I'm happy to share this deck out, you know, after the call, but at a high level, a host purchased a property, um, created more bedrooms, brought in about 250K. So his investment was 250K. And then after all of his expenses, he brought in over 35K per year. So um, pretty good return on investment pretty quickly. Um, I will highlight a few things. The host does pay the utilities because the members are choosing a room with an all-inclusive weekly price. Pad split charges a 12% platform fee. That's the only fee a host ever pays to pad split. It's only paid to us once your property is generating revenue. And then these other expenses too. And if you if you want to get more into this, we'll set up a call separately and we'll get we'll get really into the weeds. Another cool thing about pad split is the vacancy and the turn cost compared to a traditional rental. So in a traditional rental, someone stays for a year or two, that's great, but then they move out. You have to replace the carpet, paint, advertise meet people for showings, call references, run background checks. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, in a pad split, even if the person in room one has saved up enough money to move on to their own apartment, you're still going to be getting income on rooms two through seven. Also, um, it's pretty quick to get that room back available on the market. The property manager goes to the home, throws away anything the member left behind, swiffers the floor, replaces the mattress cover, and then the room can be reactivated. Um, hosts like you guys set your weekly price. We make suggestions, you make decisions. Same thing with the move-in fee. Members pay a non-refundable move-in fee that is intended to cover the cost of this turn when they move out. Um, most of the property managers in our network are turning the rooms within three days after the person leaves. And like we were talking about before, you know, anywhere from three to 10 days, most likely until that room gets rebooked again. Um, next, just kind of want to go through who does what, because I know I've, I've said a few things like the property manager is pad split the property manager. We are not. The way to think about it is pad split manages the members or the people in your home. And then the property manager, which could be you as the investor or a third party property manager that you hire, are responsible for everything at the property. So the way so um, the hosts are going to make sure the room is right. The rooms are ready for move in. They're going to manage communications about the property. So if someone shows up on move in day and they can't figure out how to you know, open the door, the property manager is going to say, you know, lift the handle to the left or to the right. Um, and then also any sort of proactive and reactive maintenance at the property, including things like lawn care, room turns and the recommended monthly inspections. In contrast, we're going to do most of the remote general stuff. So we're going to do all of your marketing. All of your back, all of the background checks, everything like that. Um, we also handle collections, so uh, that's done through our system. And you, as the investor, always have insight to know exactly, you know, per room what's come in this month. Um, but we're the ones calling to say, you know, hey, do you need to change the debit card on file? Hey, do you need to be referred to our staffing agencies? Um, any partners? Anything like that? And then Pat's what also handles the member to member issues. So Eric in room one ate my peanut butter, or Tiffany's playing her music too loud or anything that might be going on at the property, this sort of behavioral comes to Pat's foot. Um, so I really hope you're amped and want to be an investor on our platform because we really do help people, uh, you know, double their returns. But if you're thinking, I'm not ready to be a host, but I am a vendor, like any of the things I rattled off, realtor, contractor, um, property manager, lender, photographer, insurance provider, uh, we have a vendor network and we're always looking for more partners. So um, this would be another you know, thing to reach out to me about. Hey, Blake, I'm a contractor in Orlando, Florida, and I really would like to work with PadSplit. I can introduce you to my teammates that can help you get into our vendor network. Or maybe you're thinking, 
I don't have a property that's ready today, but my colleague has a perfect spot. We have a really great referral program. We like to say it's the easiest $1,000 you'll ever make. Essentially, um, if you have investor friends, family that you think have properties that could be a fit already or looking to purchase a new investment strategy or something, if you introduce them to me um, via email, you'll just say, hey, Blake, this is, you know, I was on Eric's podcast. I heard you speak. This is my brother. He wants to deploy some capital. Um, I'll walk your brother or whoever the case would be through our, our whole process. And then um, when he activates a home with at least five rooms and one of our nine active markets, the following month, we'll issue you a $1,000 Visa gift card. So um, we'd love to have you guys as a host. We'd love to have you as a vendor and also as a, as a referral partner. There you go. And we'd love to hear, you know, any questions that you guys have. All right. So first of all, what a great presentation and what a great um, just, you know, getting into what does it look like? And as a host, uh, Tiffany, my wife and I, we have been hosts for uh, almost four years now. Well, three and a half. And we have just seen the the facility of everything improve. We have seen getting like on our side, like acquiring the property, setting up the property, um, all of that stuff has gotten easier. And then on the pad split side of things, like when we first joined y'all, you know, they're still like they're still figuring things out here and there. And it's just gotten so good on, you know, we need help doing this or I need help talking to this tenant. And they just have just a plethora of resources that help you. Right. So um, I want to do some some questions here and then I've got a little thing I'm going to show as well. So the first question we have is when looking for a property, how can I be sure that the property can legally become a pad split? That's a great question. So at a high level, pad split only operates in markets that we feel like we can operate in. So, you know, we're not in California. We're not in New York City that are just super uh, difficult markets for landlords. Um, we'd love to be maybe one day. But um, at a high level, it's thinking about where you are and we can. Cons that's the kind of thing you should consult with me on. So, for example, we have homes in Jacksonville, Florida, but Jacksonville Beach is a market that we felt like the way that their kind of rules are written, we didn't feel comfortable operating in Jacksonville Beach. So when it comes to I'd love to know kind of what market you're in. But like when it comes to, for example, the city of Atlanta, what their rules say, they're, the way they define family is up to six unrelated parties plus four boarders, plus an unlimited number of domestic servants and watchmen. So pad split reads that as six unrelated parties, plus four or six and six unrelated parties, plus four boarders. So we read that as a 10 bedroom. And we have reason we've spoken with the mayor's office in the city of Atlanta to be confident that a well-run home uh, with, you know, a 10 rooms or less in the city of Atlanta can operate legally. Um, so it does just kind of depend on area. We have, I should say, we also have two full-time attorneys um, that are always sort of staying abreast of issues, making sure that, you know, educating me and my teammates to say like Jacksonville beach, like we don't feel good about, but here are the parts of Jacksonville we feel great about. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome answer. And, and I will say this is when we buy a property that we want it to become a pad split and we're in a market that we're not sure if it's going to work with code enforcement or we're not sure it's going to, you know, pass the standards. What we do is we buy it going into the assumption of pad split may not work. It has to be able to make money as a single family rental as well. And so when we go into it, we buy it with the assumption that our rent income is going to be based on single family home. Can it work? And if it works, we'll buy it. And when we go and put up temporary walls and stuff like that, and I'm going to show you how we do some, some planning on that part. But when we put up those temporary walls, we make sure that, we, we make sure that they can come down easily and we can convert that home right back over. Here is another awesome question. Uh, who takes care of the evictions? That's a good question. So um, at a, to answer you directly, it's the property manager, but let me provide a little more context. So um, almost all evictions at Padsplit are due to collections. Um, we have a collections and we have a collections team um, that as soon as we're one dollar late, we're calling to see how we can help you get on top of it. Once a member's balance exceeds $300, which is less than two weeks dues in most of our markets, because in Atlanta, for example, the average room price is $167 per week. So very early or like without, it's not like a whole month goes by without getting the, the revenue. Once someone is at $300, they're put on financial probation and they have 48 hours to get their balance under 300. 
If they do, they stay. If they don't, then they're terminated. The property manager goes and turns the room. In almost all cases, the person is already gone. If the person is there, the property manager who's been trained by our team knows to sort of how to navigate the conversation to try to get the person to leave, you know, with the balance and explaining if you leave today, you can always come, you can pay back this host, what you owe them when you're back on your feet and you can move into another pad split mm -hmm. less than 4% of the time. So not 4% of homes, but 4% of members, an eviction does have to be filed. If an eviction has to be filed, that becomes a responsibility of the property manager because it requires physically going to the property. And that's kind of where one of the like pads split doesn't go to the property. Um, yeah. Before COVID, we never had a single eviction. Unfortunately, with COVID, we have had some, so it's under 4%. Um, a few things to just kind of, that I think mitigate the risk is that you could have an eviction in any rental. In a pad split, if you have one and you have a seven bedroom house, it's one out of the seven rooms that you're missing out on the revenue of. So you're still getting like 84% of your revenue or whatever the math is versus getting nothing in a traditional rental. Also, the point of intervention being a $300 cutoff is not a whole month's due rent. It's not two months rent before you're having to move. Third, um, the members pay an all-inclusive weekly price. And I think that that's really helpful because they don't have any surprises and know exactly what to expect. Um, members are encouraged to line up their payday at pad split on the same day they get paid you know, at their job. Um, and so I think while there is risk, there's risk in all real estate and it's much lower in a pad split than I would say in a traditional rental. Um, that's a great question. I do have experience with an eviction with pad split, and I will say it is the it was the easiest eviction I've ever done in my life. And you might be asking, well, when you go to court and you talk to the judge, what is the judge going to say? Like, you're not the landlord at that point. Like, you're master leasing it to pad split. What is who? How do they answer that? Well, I will say this: in the county that I'm at, um, the judge just saw oh, the lease that this member is responsible for this amount of rent. They are back. They're not due. I am the owner of the contract that I have signed with pad split. So I am like the, the tier above. So they respected that level of ownership and I was able to do that eviction. And even still that conversation with that member was not difficult. It was, Hey, you're, you're late and you got to get out. And usually they're in a spot. You know, they're they're caught between a rock and a hard place. And of the evictions that I've done, I've done two with pad split. And of those evictions, it was very amicable. We were able to work out a payment plan. And then we turned that payment plan and said, pad split, hey, here's their payment plan. Here's what they're going to do. And we ended up not having to actually formally get them out. What we did was we went through the dispo process and then got them on a payment plan. And then they got caught back up. And pad split has gotten really good at making sure if if members are behind and they do get put into that eviction status, that you as the host, you do have a lot of free reign to work with that member as you need to. Because in, in the real, real estate business, we're not in the business of having empty homes. That is not our business. Our business is to take care of the tenants and make sure they have a place to stay. And if they're in a situation where they are, they're in between jobs or they had a big health thing come up, you know, you have the ability to take care of that. And if you are burnt out, you're a burnout real estate uh, investor and you just are tired of hearing the sob story, you have every ability to take them to court go through your eviction status, do your dispo, get that right of possession and get them out. And it's just, pad split does a really good job of taking care of you. And to speak to what Blake was saying, and if you have a four or five, six, seven bedroom house, you're only missing out on one bedroom's income during that process. I will say, if you do something for one member and you give leeway to one member, the people in that house talk. So you're going to want to be very careful on how you're setting the precedent on rent. Because if you work with that one member and say, well, we'll give you you know, four months to, to get caught back up. That's too long, in my opinion. That's too long. You say, hey, buddy, you got, you got four weeks. And if you're not caught back up, we're going through the eviction process. We're going to court. We're going to work out that payment plan. But I'm going to get that paperwork filed to where I can, I can get you out. Um, that way, if you don't follow up to it, if you don't stand up to what you're saying you're going to do, I can get you out. So you just want to make sure you're setting the right precedence when you're talking to members who are in an eviction status. Yeah, everything he said. We also also mentioned there's a company called Isusu, E-S-U-S-U. -S -S -U. They're like a 
company that's like trying to make credit more equitable, they're who we do our uh, weekly every every week when the member's paying on time when we're submitting those on time payments. It's to this company, Asusu. Asusu also does micro loans for pad split members at no interest for a thousand dollars, and that is another way that we can sort of help members if they're just in a rough patch. Um, and yeah, I mean, my my dad manages some apartments that are very nice, and our he has a like his rate of default is higher than ours. And I think um, for, for kind of this population being maintaining a 97% collections rate is, is, is pretty good. Absolutely. So I want to move over to one thing that I do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a screen here and you'll see here, this is a, a planning software that I use when we take on a pad split. And it's called Dream Plan Home Design. I don't know how much it costs. It, it, it's relatively cheap, I know, uh, if it costs anything. But what I do is I go on the tax assessor's office and I find the exact measurements of the house. And then when I'm in my due diligence, I take measurements of every room. And then I come back here and I build it out. And I say, okay, here's how I'm finding the property. And when I found this property, it was, there's a, a carport here. And then there was laundry in the back of the carport and then you'd come into the house here or here. So there, there were kind of two front doors and you would come in here and there'd be a small kitchen and a dining room. And then there was this weird room right here that was kind of a pass through that wasn't being used as a bedroom. It was just like a playroom or maybe a formal dining room. And then over here was the living room. And then back here were the two bedrooms. So we bought this house as a two, one and a half. There was a full bath in the hallway here and there was a half bath in the master bedroom. And so I go in here and the reason I build it in here is to make sure I have dimensions and I know that my dimensions are going to work. So like, uh, Blake, can you uh, help me out here? What is the minimum bedroom size that pad split requires? 80 square feet and then no wall shorter than seven and a half feet. Okay. So when building it in something like this, you can get those measurements down. Um, now, I'm not going to go through how I take the measurements in here. You can get this, but you can click on that measure tool and you can measure from you know here to here and say, oh, that's eight feet from there to there. Um, but just know that you can do something like that in this program. So I build it out and say, well, we found it as a two, one and a half. What is the first thing we're going to do? Like Blake said, we're going to take and we're going to what we did was we extended this bathroom over and we made it a full bath. So we pushed this wall over and put a shower in here and now made this an ensuite. That is one of the most um, effective things you can do because now you can charge more for that bedroom. And so yeah, that was the first thing we more. did. Say that again. About 50% more. Right. 50% yeah. more. So if I was going to charge $150 for this bedroom, I can now charge possibly $225 for this bedroom now. So, um, and I will give you exact numbers on what we're renting this house out for <laughs> with pad split. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this space. We don't want our common spaces uh, with couches and stuff that invites unwanted guests to sleep over. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take and I'm going to make this living room a bedroom. So I put this little half wall here um, just to make this front door not accessible into this bedroom. So I put a temporary wall up here and then I added a bedroom there. And the next thing I did was I put a wall up in this in this hallway and I made this a bedroom as well. So I just took this two one and a half into a four bedroom income stream. So this property right here, um, our bedrooms are rented out. At, so this one right here is $160 a week. This room right here is $170. This room right here is one nine, uh, $195 for this ensuite. And then this room right here is $155. You might be asking, well, what does that actually look like for earnings? And I will say this, in February, this property as a standard straight rental would only bring in about $1,200 a month, and that is gross. So what did it bring in as a pad split? In February, it brought in $2,900 gross. So, I mean, that's just real world example of the power of pad split. And when you can do this over and over, and I could have very well done my best to create something 
like this. I could have brought this over here and brought this wall even closer there and did another one. Uh, let's see if I can... I don't, I don't remember how to do this. But I could have essentially done another bedroom right here and taken this front door and turned it into a non-entry door. And I could have made this a five bedroom. Now, the reason I didn't do that is we were, we were kind of in a newer market and I didn't want to put in even more money into it. But I can still go over to this house and move that wall, right? I could still go over and move that wall and add another bedroom. Now, that is going to put a little strain on the house because it would mean that there would be four bedrooms to this one bathroom. And that is where I believe Pad Split recommends you cut off four to one. So that is where I would maximize the potential of this property. Yeah, three to one, four to one is is the most that you can have sharing one bath. Um, but yeah, three to one, four to one. We don't see a big difference in tenure. Um, but like if the room was a lot smaller, maybe you get a little bit less per week, but you have an extra room. So there's there's usually multiple avenues and multiple ways to, to split up a house and you kind of weigh the pros and the cons of each. Right. We have another great question here. And um, Blake, I'm not sure if this is going to be for you or for me, but what do you... I can answer this. I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Is there a way to do this through an IRA or a 401k? So that I'm not sure about. I we do have. I would need to follow up. Mm -hmm. I, I can follow up on that. So here's here's the answer I would give you. You absolutely can do this. It's just that you cannot touch it. So if you buy this into your uh, 401k or your IRA, you just want to make sure that you are not touching that property in any way. You cannot benefit actively from that, which means you can't manage it yourself. You can't, you can't work on it yourself. So you would hire someone to master lease it from you. And then they give it to pad split. That way they're dealing with the day-to-day -day things with that, with that uh, pad split. So the room turns, you can't do it. You know, if it comes to evictions, you can't do it. You can't do any of that stuff. So just find a way to have an intermediary serve you. Um, for that, for that uh, investment account? That's a great question. You add it. Good to know. I learned something to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there are so many ways to be successful in this uh, pad split space. Um, and that's just, that's another way to do it. You can grow your retirement account with pad split. And just, just find you an intermediary. And if you're looking for someone to run your pad split, they're going to want some income from it. So you're not going to benefit wholly from, from what, what the income is going to bring in. But, you know, maybe they're going to charge you $500 a month and your cash flow was looking like $1,000 a month. So your um, your retirement account would grow $500 a month and your intermediary would grow $500 a month. Are there intermediaries on the vendor list? I, I'm sure and I'm using intermediaries as a word just uh, to fill in the, the space. I'm not sure if you would even call it that. You just need someone that would be willing to run your pad split for you. Yeah, so we we do have property managers that would al like that allow investors to be totally passive, and they can see the income report. They can have access to our dashboard. But like, as far as clogged toilets, room turns, Wi-Fi is too slow, Johnny ate my peanut butter. You can be totally removed from all of that. Yeah, and where can they find that vendor list? Great question. So it's on our website. I will drop a link in the chat. So in a house of four bedrooms, housing eight adults. Okay, so really, uh, before I do that, um, to answer the question about a four-bedroom house housing eight adults, every room is single adults only. So um, you're never going to have couples. You're never going to have like a, an adult with a child. It's just single adults. Um, and then it's exactly right. So the closer you are to public transit, the less number of cars you need to have or less need of space you need to have for cars. So mm -hmm. we have homes that are, you know, half a mile to a bus stop that are eight bedrooms and only three people have cars because the other five are walking to the bus or their friend is picking them up or whatever the case may be. When you get to homes that are further away from public transit, you, yeah, like we have a 10 bedroom home in the middle of Southwest, you know, Southwest Atlanta. Only three people have cars. The other seven are getting on the bus or walking or getting their friend to pick them up. As you get further out from the city, or further out from places of transit, yeah, you're probably not going to have a 10-bedroom house. Maybe you have a four-bedroom house like Eric or a five-bedroom, and you have space for maybe three or four of the cars. Also, when homes have parking around the back of the house, that's a really nice opportunity too, because then it's like not 
disturbing the neighbors. Um, when you create a listing on our site, you can say, this is an eight bedroom house. I, there is space for two off street and two on street parking spaces, like for example. And then when the people are staying in the home, when they're registering the, when they're signing up, they have to indicate if they have a car. And if the car allowance for a property has been reached, when someone goes to book that next room, our system is going to say, like, you're welcome to book a room in this property, but confirm that you're not bringing a car because the car maximum has been reached. Um, sometimes go. people will widen the driveway with gravel. There's there's a lot of ways. And if you uh, like have a specific property, I'll provide a whole portfolio analysis, including kind of thoughts on parking. <clears throat> if we have an area that we're interested in buying a pad split, just pad split, see if the area will work. So we have... Um, for starters, I think the best thing to do would be to email me and it's just Blake at padslip.com and I can provide some analysis on the property. Um, and then either I can meet you with the property or I can hook you up with a contractor to walk the property and give you some feedback, like move this wall, put a door there, whatever. Um, yeah. Being in the field is my favorite part of my job. So please, please bring me into the field. I have a property down in LaGrange where we have seven bedrooms um, over the span of there's a main house and there's a, a carriage house. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures from this house. So you'll see here that, and we're just going to go through these pictures. It seems just like a standard brick ranch. And what um, we did was this was a two one house when we bought it and we converted it to a re regular rental um, and it, we, we made it a three bedroom, two bath as a regular rental. And then beside the house was this carriage house, like a detached garage. And what we did was we went in and renovated that upstairs and it's a two bedroom, one bath. And I'm just going to show you all some pictures from the inside, how we set it up, these bedrooms. Um, this is what the inside of a pad split can look like. Um, this is not what I would consider like the A plus uh, pad split rooms. These are what I would consider B minus or so rooms, um, but they all still produce income. Uh, we get a bed, we get um, a wardrobe. You see up in here that we have a place for them to put their clothes. That's what you want. You, If you don't have a closet, you want a wardrobe or a place for them to put their clothes. We have a nightstand and we have a lamp and a piece of artwork. So, and you'll see throughout, it's just, they're pretty pretty barren. I mean, that's what you want. You want a blank slate for people to move into and make their own. And so these are the bedrooms and these are the two bathrooms. There's one, there's the kitchen from the house and we have a small place for them to eat if they want to sit down and eat. And uh, that we do have laundry service available in the house there. There's the second bedroom. And then we go into the apartment upstairs. There's just a small living room where we don't, all we have in that living room is a table for them to sit at. And then we have the two bedrooms for them. And what, what I do to show that is in the front part of that property, there's just, there was just this skinny little drive that went down. We had a company come in and grade the whole driveway and we have parking for up to 10 cars. If we ever want to expand our, our, uh, our room number there. And we can, and there's never any issues. The biggest thing that I have seen in, in the past four years on problems with pad splits is garbage and parking. Those are two of the biggest concerns that I usually see are garbage and parking. And what you want to make sure is if you have more than five people in that house, go and get you two cans, get you two trash cans out front. And <clears throat> we even had a property not too long ago where there were eight bedrooms in the house and we just got a small dumpster put on the property. And it was equivalent to three cans and we never had a trash issue there. And it was a lot of parking there as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think um, the truth is as far as Metro Atlanta, it has seemed to work everywhere. When we, when I started in 2019, we had this rule that every home had to be within half a mile of MARTA, um, which is the, the bus system, the bus train, the mm -hmm. system here. And we had an investor with properties in Gwinnett County, which is kind of in the Northeast part of Metro Atlanta saying he thought that was a silly rule and that he knew that he and his part of the city housing was needed. So he's actually the the profile I was going to pull up. He now has 16 homes, all but one of them are in Gwinnett County. And he has made, you know, a very nice, you know, a very nice earnings. We have homes in Noonan, we have homes in Marietta, we have homes in Douglasville, Conyers, Covington. So we grow and grow and grow. And like the reality is minimum wage in Georgia is $7 and 25 cents and studio apartments are at least $1,200. So you could make almost three times the minimum wage and still not get approved for most like basically anything where you'd want to live. So um, if you've got a Walmart, if you've got a Chick-fil-A, 
you've got a hospital, you can fill a house. Yep. So I'm Wilburn Property Management. That's the, the company we're going to talk about. It says 14. I thought it was 16. So let me, we'll see in a second. So he's got 14 homes. He gets all these notices about move-ins and moves out, move out. So he's got 98 active rooms, 95 are occupied, and one is listed. Uh, one has a pending move-in, three, someone just moved out, he needs to turn the room, and then six, he has inactive because he's doing a repair on one house. So if we look at what's come in, it is the first of the month. Like literally already eight grand has come in. If we want to see what did he do in 2022? Keeping in mind that some of the properties he has were added during the year in 2022. So not all the properties have been active the whole year, but he brought in over 800K last year on his pad splits. And then kind of speaking back to his occupancy, I mean, all of his properties except for one are not in, you know, they're not in, or like they're not by where there's metro area. So he's got Snellville, mm -hmm. he's got Lilburn, he's got Norcross. Um, and they're all, they're all doing really well. Um, he has also, I think that is cool is that you can see um, that homes are, he has bookings approved where people pass the pad split screening and then he can provide extra screening and decide if he wants to let the person in his house or not. Mm -hmm. um, he's got this nice little wrench icon, which is where member issue members send their maintenance tickets. They come in here. He can communicate with them, drag them through to let people know the kind of the status of what's going on. He's got, um, he can see info on his members so he can sort by the city and by property and by financial status. Keys are basically when they, um, you move in with three keys. When you break a rule, you lose a key. When you break the third rule, you're out. Um, I wouldn't worry about these balances because for most people, Friday is their payday, which means today the invoice is generated on Wednesday. It's not actually due until Friday. So I'm sure like, I wouldn't be concerned that two people show. I'm sure that like time to pay means the invoice has been generated, but it's not actually due yet. So there's all kinds of great resources in here. Um, some other great tools for you guys that you have access to. If you just sign up on padsplit.com, um, this kind of speaks to, um, does this area work for padsplit? You can come into this map. Blue dots are cities we're active in today. Gray dots are ones we're moving into, you know, later this year. So you just kind of like, for example, click into Atlanta and then drill in enough to where the screen turns blue like this. And then you can literally sort. So if your property is in, let's say, College Park, you can put in the zip code and it'll tell you how many rooms we have, what the average weekly price is, and the occupancy. So if the home happened to be in College Park, I think you could feel very good about there being demand. 96%. We have 4,200 bedrooms across Metro Atlanta. We're 92% full today. So even in a zip code that has this many rooms, we're still outperforming our Metro Atlanta average. Um, so this is a really great tool, kind of get started. Um, we also break out every single thing you need. So like when Eric was talking about the bed and the mattress and everything, everything is right here on this guideline sheet. If you want to take the guesswork out of it, you, we literally have an Amazon and Home Depot gift and a shopping list where it's like, okay, say seven bedrooms, three bathrooms. It's going to tell you one washer, one dryer, of course, but then it's going to take into account one dining set. But then in like the bedroom section, it'll update seven pieces of artwork, seven bed frames, seven nightstands, really taking the guesswork out. Um, some hosts use the shopping list. That's great. Some hosts um, go to Home Goods and Ikea. It's up to you. It, you know, you don't have to have this clothing storage. You just need to have a clothing storage. Um, that vendor network that I was talking about um, a little bit earlier, this is where you find that. So let's say you have a property we meet. I think it's great for pad split and you just need to put up some walls. You could come in here and do this and say, Hey, Tyler, saw you on the Pad Split website. Um, I own 123 Main Street. Can you come by and give me a bid kind of thing? So there's a lot of really great resources here. Um, and yeah, if we set up a call, one of the things we'll do is we'll kind of walk through all the, you know, everything that is available so that you know, you know, what resources are there. All right. <clears throat> I like that. Um, if you are interested in setting up a call with someone at Pad Split, I am putting in a link into the 
into the chat. If you click on that, you're going to fill out some information, and I'm pretty sure that will go directly to Blake, and you will be able to set up a call with her. Yep. Um, and then to the question on the living room. Um, so yeah. the, generally speaking, you're not going to have a living room in the pad split because you'll have converted that to create another bedroom so that you can add on average 700 bucks to your top line every month. Um, as far as furniture goes for like the dining room, headboards, those kinds of things, uh, never fabric. Um, because what you want to think about is the long-term durability. So if you have um, a dining set and you have tan colored cushions on the chairs and, or, you know, and then someone spills some soda, it's going to be really hard to get that clean. So we would recommend wood, metal, you know, same thing with the headboard. Cause we were thinking about, you want the home, you want to be able to like easily refresh and sanitize the room when someone does move out. And that's not super common. The average day is nine and a half months. You don't want to see that someone like was drinking coffee in bed and like spilt coffee on the headboard. And now you have the stained coffee headboard and someone new is going to move in and see like something stained. So yeah. um, no living room, no couches, but as far as the furniture, you do have wood, metal. It's the way I would go. Absolutely. And what we do is we don't have the exact same kind of furniture in every property. We guide our, our furniture is guided on how nice the property is. So if we have a class A property, we're not going to go put in the metal frame uh, beds with the you know, low end mattresses with the low end covers and the low end nightstand and all that. We're going to go and buy the nicer level stuff with a headboard and with a footboard that are wood or metal. And we're going to get a nicer nightstand and a nicer lamp. We might even put two lamps in the room. Um, so I, I, I would say that you're, you're going to guide what level of furniture you're putting in with what kind of property it is. Um, so if you have one that's in a rough part of town or that the finished levels within the house, like you have uh, Formica countertops and not granite. If you have granite countertops, that means, you know, you're probably in a nicer level of home. So just don't spend too much money on the furnishings, but also buy something that's durable and that's going to last and that is going to make, the, the members comfortable. All right. Another question here. Um, do you allow members to put up artwork? Um, in my pad splits, I put up the artwork and I actually name my rooms based on the artwork. So I will go to like Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby. It's, a, it's like guard used to be called garden Ridge back in the day, but it's called uh, at home. It's called at home. And I go to at home and I buy, you know, 15 pieces of artwork that are random sizes, random shapes, random everything. And I go hang them up in the room and say, okay, that is now the unicorn room <laughs> or that is now the bulldog room. And that's how I got, I, that's how I gauge it. But Blake, you can answer. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't, I mean, I don't want to say that's never happened, but that's, it's not something that usually people are, are coming with. Usually people are coming with a suitcase or two. They know that their room is just a place for them. You know, their place is it's safe and it's clean and they can and it's functional and they can like lay their head to sleep. Um, what we do see is people sometimes bring their own TV, which is fine. I mean, I wouldn't provide them as the host, but if people yeah. do bring their TV and play their Xbox or whatever, um, some rooms do have desks, which is, again, we don't want members bringing furniture. So if you have a big room you know, potentially putting a desk in the room could get you five bucks extra per week or something. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want people bringing their own furniture that's like heavy, like a desk, a TV, whatever. Um, as far as the artwork, like I, I would hope that they're not like putting holes in the walls. But if um, so, the members pay a non-refundable move, move in fee, it's 150, usually costs about 75 to turn the room. So in the event you got to like patch a hole or something, you have a little extra cushion, not to mention damage can be passed through. So you know, if you if you're doing your monthly inspection or the property manager is doing their monthly inspection where they are, you know, they're not like going through the member stuff. They are opening the doors to the bedrooms. If they see that someone has put like, I don't know, a million pieces of artwork up, that could be a conversation like, hey, you know, you did hang a lot. I think it looks great. Love your style. But I'm going to go ahead and assess you a $50 fine because I'm going to have to patch the I'm going to have to you know patch it up when they move. Um, right. But usually people aren't bringing their own artwork. And then to Eric's point, I would go to Home Goods, buy whatever is on sale that's like not polarizing or offensive in some way. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a picture of a giraffe. Cool. Oh, it's a picture of a bowl of fruit. Wonderful. Right. Um, and just to that effect of don't let them bring their own furniture. I did have somebody get a piece of furniture from like Aaron's rental furniture. 
and they had it delivered, whatnot, set up. I didn't know about it until the member had moved out um, because I went to the house to turn the room and there was a sign on the door saying, we need to collect this and you're in collections for this piece of furniture. And they kept going to the house trying to pick up this and it's like, he don't live here no more. <laughs> All right, next question. Um, so do we try, we don't try. So historically with pad split, if someone has passed a background check and has the income to afford a room, they can book the room and, and move on. Mm -hmm. um, we now, which I'll saw briefly with that host profile is the ability to toggle on member approvals. Um, if you did want to have a house that's only men or only women, um, where we stand right now is that if you put that clearly in the listing, you can do that. Um, that said, uh, when a member applies for a room, you have 24 hours to approve or reject them. And if you don't reject them in that time, they are automatically approved. So if you are trying to have an all gender house, just kind of know that is your sort of timeline that, you know, if you're trying to have women only and a Jimmy applies, if 24 hours go by and you don't reject Jimmy, he is going to be allowed to move in. Right. Yeah. And, and I will say this uh, of our homes and we, we've had, you know, several dozen members move in and out and that are staying with us now. Um, we have 30 rooms right now. And of those 30 rooms, we only have two females. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if that's common that, across the No, it's not. Uh, that's platform. interesting. Uh, it's slightly, I think it's like 58% women. Uh, oh, so wow. For our last, sur we do quarterly surveys. And for mm -hmm. our last survey, it was like 58% women or something. Right. But of those two women that are staying in two different properties, there have never been any issues with um that i can see but i i also don't see all of the issues within the house uh, but it has never been brought to my attention that a woman or a man within a home has felt uncomfortable or or anything of that nature so uh, yeah. i do find that i like having uh women in in my pad splits because they are the first to file a little complaint within the saying and say these these folks are nasty and they need a clean and then we are brought to attention of whoa, people are not keeping up with their stuff. Let's let's go do an inspection and figure out why is this property dirty? And we can we can mitigate that uh, by us having, you know, those whistleblowers within the house. Yeah. And I'll say um, cleanliness is like the the biggest complaint we hear. Um, and I'll let me go. I'll go back to that. First, I'll say we do have a 24 seven member support center. So if someone is making someone else uncomfortable, there's a lot of ways that someone can report it, including a phone call to our team that will get answered 24 seven. Um, on the cleanliness, uh, when you first start a home, you're going to be required to provide certain cleaning supplies. Um, and then what most hosts do is send in a monthly cleaning service for common areas only. So common bathrooms, the kitchen and the hallway, but never inside of someone's bedroom. Um, the other thing that I've seen some hosts do that I think is, is successful is set up like a 50 or $60 recurring order with Amazon or Walmart or something to just have cleaning supplies delivered to the home. Because the the reality is a lot of our members, while they are saving money in a pad split, they're still very price sensitive and cost sensitive. You know, things like gas going up 15 cents a gallon really can impact people a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So if someone's choosing between buying new sponges for the kitchen for everyone to use or their chicken and broccoli and rice for the week, people are going to choose their own food, which is totally human nature. Mm -hmm. But if the stuff is provided, it shows that the host really cares, which goes a long way. But two, like... If there are clean sponges, if there is a fresh thing, a bottle of Lysol, if there are fresh Clorox wipes, Swiffer pads, whatever, people are going to use them. So my suggestion is to set up a monthly cleaning service and then a monthly replenishment of supplies. Yeah. So what we have done in our business is we have an Amazon subscribe and save that automatically refill every, I think it's eight weeks that we refill the sponges and they just, they get a box of sponges uh, every eight weeks and they get Febreze spray and they get Lysol spray. Um, and we do have every quarter, once a quarter, we have a cleaning service go and clean the common areas of the home. So exactly. now, exactly. and with the, in, the, with the higher income of pad splits, that is the cost of doing business within this realm. And it's going to make sh it, what it does is it keeps the people in the home longer and exactly. it makes sure that you know, the people are happy and that they stay and that they talk good about your property to others. And when you open another property, that person's going to be like, oh, well, they're opening one down the street. You know, I've got friends that that love, you know, where I'm at and you can get your own right down the street. So it just it's going to help you by mm -hmm. spending money to keep it nice. Yeah. 
I, I'd like to say like usually your expenses for a pad split are about and just to be total and it, every house is different and please use me to run some analysis but at a high like roughly speaking your expenses with pad split are probably going to be about two and a half times higher than doing a traditional rental because of the mm -hmm. things like a lawn care because of the things like paying the pad split fee but when the income can offset that it's more than worth it. So like in a home that would rent for 1800 bucks as a traditional rental, if you can bring in five grand for a pad split, who cares if your expenses are 2300 or 2100 compared to 700, because you're still left with so much more left over. Exactly. Um, and the cleaners, do, they don't go into the individual room. So right. they're just cleaning the common areas only. So if you're lucky enough to be in one of the rooms, the private bathroom, the positive is that you have your own private bathroom. And the drawback is that you're cleaning it yourself because the cleaning yep. service isn't going to enter any bedrooms. Exactly. And that's going to be our last question for the day. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. Blake, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on Investor Connect live talking about pad splits. And listen, if you have more questions, this is not the end of the road. What you need to do is you need to go into that chat or go into the comments, click on pad split referral factory link and set up a call with Blake. And I know Blake and have known her for years now. She will answer any question you got. And if she doesn't know the answer, she knows the people that do. So you, you need to be reaching out and setting up a time to meet with Blake. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you all for listening. Um, would love to meet you in person over video. I do two monthly meetups in person in Atlanta as well. So please hit me up, use this referral. Uh, code and um, just really grateful for the opportunity and hope to work with all of you. Right on. Thank and you if so you're just now joining this stream, know that it is going to be replayed uh, back in the Investor Connect page. If you know anyone that might benefit from this information or that might be able to use PadSplit in their portfolio, send them to Investor Connect, have them join and come watch this presentation. All right. We are immensely grateful for you joining us today. If you haven't already done so, we invite you to subscribe to our show. We understand that many of you tune in regularly, but perhaps haven't had the chance to hit that subscribe button yet. Don't worry, it's effortless. It takes about three seconds to follow or subscribe on your platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're enjoying the show. Your support is invaluable to us and has played a crucial role in the tremendous growth of our podcast. Together, we can launch this podcast to even greater heights.